Stop just talking just... about American things and let's watch the best film ever made. Please bring back these Brit hits. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 British shows that need to return. What is it? This gen. It's the internet. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe for more great content. For this list, we look at British shows which were prematurely cancelled, as well as those which have already enjoyed a reasonable run. These programs were either so popular while airing that we'd unanimously welcome them back, or they went under the radar on initial release and only gained a small court following before they were scrapped. This is a crisis, a large crisis. In fact, if you've got a moment, it's a 12-story crisis. Number 10, The IT Crowd. It's almost as if she doesn't know anything about computers. What? A pioneer for nerd comedy and geek chic, this four-series sitcom proved wildly popular with millennials especially. Creator Graham Linehan blended tech-themed humor and old-fashioned farce as Moss, Roy and Jen trudge through their daily lives at Renham Industries. You'd like to come to theatre tomorrow night, maybe? Or... I'd be delighted. Despite multiple BAFTA wins, and higher than average ratings, a commissioned fifth season was cancelled by Linen, who felt the show had run its course. Oh, tell me, Margaret, tell us all. How could we possibly pay any more attention to you? We did get a one-off special in 2013, but with its stars moving on to bigger projects, it'll be tough to lure them back into the basement again. Look, I know that the place looks like a bit of a mess, but it's actually a very delicate ecosystem. Number nine, Dream Team. The driver mysteriously dropped the charges, luckily for you. See? Essentially a soap opera about football, Dream Team won big audiences in its heyday. A 10 season run saw the fortunes of Harchester United become a staple of Sunday night programming, playing into the public's fascination with what goes on behind the scenes at a football club. Stunning strike by Mark Hughes, and what can Ron Atkinson do now? Unlike its rival, Footballers' Wives, this drama emphasized the football itself while the cameos from actual players alongside Carl Fletcher and company added a degree of believability. And Harchester's hopes will rest on the shoulders of this man, Carl Fletcher. The series ended in fiery circumstances, but this potent recipe for football drama would surely still win the Dragons plenty of supporters. <laughs> Number 8, Limmy Show. That's right, it's a kilogram of steel, because steel is heavier than feathers. Brian Lemon's sketch show offers some of the most absurd and inspired comedy you'll ever see. While the series wasn't to everyone's taste, it only ever aired on BBC Scotland, so there are huge audiences who still haven't met the likes of Falconhoof, the host of a fantasy call-in show, or Dee Dee, an overly analytical layabout. And I had Marcella B dance. A unique show, it ran for three seasons and explored all of life's big questions in an entirely original way. You can find the original series on Netflix, but damn it, we still want more unbridled Scottish peculiarity, please. Run me! Down the bombers, right? Star. Number 7, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. My name is Dr. Rick Douglas, MD. I got the call too early to grab a shower, so I had to make do with a quick rinse around the key areas. Introducing the self-proclaimed Dreamweaver, Garth Marenghi. After an elaborate marketing campaign, this surreal spoof of 1980s TV was only ever aired late at night, so Marenghi's genius may have been missed by lots of us. I warned Garth, um, I said I'm not an actor, and um, he said I'll always remember this. Fans of the show still appreciate the skill it takes to make something so deliberately inept, but still entertaining, and co-creators Matthew Holness and Richard Ayoade now boast a dedicated following for their famously farcical production. This ain't a fresh kill. In fact, they don't look like a kill at all. In the end, Channel 4 ditched Dark Place after one season, and Dean Linner's spin-off chat show didn't fare much better. Anybody for a reboot? I've got two words for you, Sanj. Telekinesis. Number 6, The Peter Serafinowicz Show. Hi, I'm Derek Bum. Say goodbye to daily stains and dirty surfaces with new kitchen gun. What's better than watching TV? Watching someone take the mick out of TV. That's the aim for Peter Serafinowicz's sketch show, with parodies of anything from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire to Big Brother, or those cringy shopping channels. Hi, I'm John, and I'm going to give you a guided tour of the latest revolution in computer technology. A cutting combo of astute observations and scarily accurate impressions brought an average of 1 million viewers per episode in 2007, a decent return for risky material. I recently purchased the world's most beautiful painting, the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. 
but the BBC quietly axed Serafinowicz after just one season, much to the disappointment of the show's fledging fanbase. Here's hoping the Brian Butterfield film comes off. I think you did a fantastic job. You're all going to be taken to the Trump International Hotel, and every one of you will make love with Donald Trump. Number 5 Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons A sci-fi puppet series following the adventures of its eponymous and indestructible Spectrum Captain, there's a constant clamoring for Jerry and Sylvia Anderson's Captain Scarlet to return. Any new developments? No sir. Proceeding as planned to rendezvous with the world president and escort him to Spectrum Maximum Security Building. Earth's war with the Mysterons, a race of sentient computers from Mars, isn't quite finished yet, so there's plenty of opportunity for next-gen puppeteers to place Scarlet into a more high-tension sacrificial situations. We are peaceful beings, and you have tried to destroy us. While writers might need to address criticisms over the show's apparent lack of humor, a potential next series could exploit new puppet technology to succeed where the 2005 CGI reboot failed. Okay, Captain Scarlet, it's either gonna be you or me. Number 4 Spaced Say hello to my little friend. A cult sitcom written by Simon Pegg and Jessica Stevenson, Spaced sees mismatched roommates Tim and Daisy juggle their frequent flights of questionable fancy with the daily, often dull demands of adult life. Edgar Wright's innovative and cinematic style brings Pegg and Stevenson's razor sharp writing to life for a combination to transform typically benign everyday situations into first-class entertainment. Oh my god. What? I've got some f***ing Jaffa cakes in my coat pocket! A third series is nearly impossible due to the creator's Hollywood success, but the spaced influence is all over the Cornetto trilogy should you ever need another fix. Number 3, I'm Alan Partridge. Have you taped over the spy who loved me? Following on from his train wreck chat show, Knowing Me, Knowing You, this sitcom sees Partridge desperately try to revive his failing career while managing the deterioration of his own mental state. And you think, oh god, James Bond's going to die! He's going to die! A pioneer of cringe comedy, each episode revolves around Alan humiliating himself in some way in front of an excellent supporting cast of characters who are routinely bemused by his delusional, nonsensical ramblings about owls, James Bond, or gladiators. You've been in this hotel for 182 days, you little shit! While other shows and films have followed, this was peak partridge, and a surprisingly deep examination of one man's midlife crisis. Jill, um, is the answer to my original question, do you like me sex-wise, is the answer to that Yes or no? Number 2, Blackadder. Flash by name! Flash by nature! Penned by Richard Curtis and Ben Elton, this sitcom spans four historical periods, with the writing cleverly adjusted for each era. Each season follows a descendant of the original Edmund Blackadder, who grows increasingly cynical about life, especially while in the company of incompetent elites, played by Stephen Fry, Hugh Laurie, and others. Or, oh, as I shall be known from now on. The Black Vegetable. Rowan Atkinson exudes Blackadder's dry wit throughout, culminating in a darkly hilarious look at World War I. The poignant conclusion and inevitable fate, even with Baldrick's cunning plans, we wish the show could be brought back, but it's difficult to see how. Oh, hurrah! The big knobs have got round the table and yanked the iron out of the fire! Thank God! Number 1 Utopia. What you want? You. With gnawing questions still unanswered, the lack of a third season of Utopia is TV torture. Most torturers tend to have their favourite areas of the body to work on. With an ever-changing narrative, and despite its striking colour palette, the show feels like an uncomfortably bleak but feasible vision of what the future of humanity looks like. I mean, we're in England, of course he wants Sterling. Its presentation of violence did draw criticism, but Channel 4 were also praised for risking a concept which has since been compared to the international success Black Mirror. Why did you have him then? Sorry? Nothing uses carbon like a first world human, yet you created one. So when 4 prematurely pulled the plug, viewers were up in arms and unfinished storylines were left forever tangled. For sanity's sake, bring it back. Um, things have gone a bit awry. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.